Hello watershed detectives. I hope you all are well. I am coming to you today to talk a little bit about watersheds and river systems. Um, when we've talked about watersheds in the past, we've said to think of a watershed as a large cereal bowl. And any milk that flows or drains down the side of your bowl is feeding or contributing milk to the puddle that sits at the bottom. Now you can think of that puddle of milk at the bottom of your bowl as a large body of water in a watershed. Um, that can be a lake, a pond, a reservoir, or an ocean. And you can also think of the uh, milk flowing down the sides of the bowl as streams. Now in the Ashokan Reservoir watershed, the large body of water, the receiving body of water, is the Ashokan Reservoir. Now the Ashokan Reservoir receives water from over 459 miles of streams, and the watershed covers 255 square miles of land, meaning that any water that falls within that 255 square miles feeds the Ashokan Reservoir. The largest contributor to the reservoir is the Asopus Creek. And the Asopus Creek receives water from nine major tributaries. That makes up about 300 miles of those 459 miles that feed the reservoir. Those streams are part of the Asopus Creek's river system. A river system is a network of streams that all flow into one main channel that eventually flows into a large body of water. And the Asopus Creek's river system is known as a dendritic river system. That means that um, it looks like a tree. So the word dendritic refers to it looking like a tree. So you can think of the Asopus Creek main channel as the trunk of a tree and each of the tributaries that comes off the side as the limbs or branches of that tree. The place where the main river in a river system begins is known as the river's source or the river's headwaters. The headwaters are higher in elevation than the receiving bodies of water. Now the source of the Esopus Creek is Winnesook Lake which sits about 2,000 feet in elevation above the reservoir. The stream that leaves this lake and travels down the steep mountain channel is known as the Asopus Creek Headwaters. The Asopus Creek Headwaters collects more water and more sediment from its tributaries as it moves through the steep valley to the lower elevations and flatter ground. The Asopus Creek becomes the creek as we know it at these lower elevations when it meets its first major tributary, Birch Creek. Each of these tributaries has their own specific amount of land that feed them water. So they have their own watersheds. These are all sub watersheds of the larger Ashokan Reservoir watershed. So when the two streams meet, those watersheds can be added together to create a larger watershed feeding water to that point. These points where two streams meet is known as the junction or the confluence. From Birch Creek, the Asopus Creek will meander back and forth across the valley bottom until it finally reaches the Ashokan Reservoir. This point and any point where a river meets its receiving body of water is known as the mouth of the river. Now I wanna come back to the idea of a watershed being a bowl. I've mentioned that any water that falls within the bowl will eventually drain to the water body at the bottom. So you can think of the edge of your bowl as the watershed divide or the watershed boundary. But what happens to water that falls outside of this boundary? It goes into a different watershed. Now the whole world can be broken up into watersheds. And these watersheds can be broken up into even smaller watersheds. I like to think of those uh, stackable dolls. So any rain or snow melt within this boundary will drain to this body of water. Any rain or snow melt on this side of the boundary 
will feed this body of water. Now, while exploring a watershed, you can use your imagination to visualize the shape of the watershed by looking up at the mountains and using your imagination to connect all the points of high elevation to define your watershed boundary. So I'm gonna use the rest of this video to take you on a tour of our watershed. We're gonna start at the uh, Shokan Reservoir where you will be able to see the bottom of the bowl as well as the mountaintops that surround it. So you can use your imagination to connect the points of high elevation and visualize the shape of the bowl. Then from there, we're gonna take a ride up to the Esopus Creek headwaters where we will observe how the stream changes in size and shape as it flows down the steep valley toward the flat valley bottom. And then I'll stop to introduce you to each of the nine tributaries at their junction as we make our way uh, to the mouth of the Esopus Creek. Let's get started. <laughs> We begin our journey today at about 600 feet above sea level, the bottom of our bowl, the reservoir. At this location you can take in a beautiful view of the surrounding mountains that provide the water needed to fill our bowl. If you use your imagination, you can connect the points of higher elevation and imagine the watershed divide that makes the shape of our bowl. Let's take a trip to the very top. Now we've traveled to about 2,000 feet higher than the reservoir and we are at Winnesook Lake, the headwater source of the Esopus Creek. This lake collects water draining from the surrounding mountaintops. From Winnesook Lake, the waters of the Esopus Creek begin their journey by immediately flowing through a culvert. The culvert allows the water to pass under the road and into a small, steep mountain stream channel. The channel is very narrow here but that quickly changes as the stream rushes down the narrow valley, collecting more water and sediment that comes from the steep valley walls and through pipes that carry runoff under the road. About one mile downstream from Winnesook Lake, the Esopus Creek meets its first significant tributary, and the size of the watershed nearly doubles, jumping from 0.64 square miles to about 1.18 square miles. You can see large amounts of sediment in the channel where the two streams have come crashing together. Note how much wider the stream becomes at this point, that it also appears to become a little bit flatter. Beyond here, the stream will continue winding clockwise around the mountain top, meeting more tributaries flowing over bedrock and creating waterfalls with deep, cold pools, and moving more sediment. We are now about six miles down from our first tributary, and the valley has really opened up. You can see just how much sediment the water is able to carry here. When the stream flows through these very wide valleys with lots of sediment, they begin to move around across the valley floor in what is known as a braided pattern. This means that the channel gets split up into many small channels like the strands of a braid. You can see some of these channels if you look carefully in the woods next to the stream. These will have water in them after heavy rains. After a short drive down the road, we meet our first major tributary, Birch Creek. At this junction here, we have dropped about 1,000 feet in elevation from where we were at Winnesook Lake. The 8 mile long Birch Creek adds 12.8 square miles of drainage area to our stream. The Esopus Creek headwaters now officially becomes the Esopus Creek. 
Bushnellsville Creek is 6.5 miles long and adds 11 square miles to our watershed. The size of the watershed is now 59 square miles, and the creek is really beginning to take advantage of flowing across the valley floor. You can see it is meandering here as it bends to flow under Route 28 for the second time. Notice how wide the floodplain is. See how those plants have been pushed down? This is evidence that the stream level has gotten this high and that it is using its floodplain. Fox Hollow Creek is a pretty small tributary. It is about 3.7 miles long and adds 4 square miles to our drainage area, the size of our watershed. The Esopus Creek is now curving and heading back toward Route 28. Shortly down the road from Fox Hollow, we meet Peck Hollow Creek. This stream is about 5 miles long and adds about 5 square miles to our watershed. Notice how the creek has gotten very close to and is now flowing alongside the road here. Broad Street Hollow is the last of our cluster of three small hollows, which includes Fox Hollow and Peck Hollow. This four mile stream contributes 9.5 square miles to our watershed and brings our drainage area up to a total of 79.2 square miles. Woodland Valley Creek is a seven and a half mile long stream that adds 20.5 square miles of land to our watershed. Woodland Valley Creek meets the Esopus Creek just before it once again crosses underneath Route 28. Very shortly downstream from this junction, we meet the Stony Clove Creek. This is our largest tributary. The Stony Clove contributes 32 square miles to our watershed. We now have 138 square miles of land feeding the creek, which looks very impressive during higher flows. At the beaver kill, we are now very close to being back at the same elevation as the reservoir. This tributary adds another 24.9 square miles to the Esopus Creek watershed, just before it crosses under Route 28 for the last time. Downstream of the Beaver Kill Esopus Creek Junction, we quickly meet our very last major tributary to the Esopus Creek, Little Beaver Kill. Little Beaver Kill increases the size of our watershed by 16.7 square miles after it flows through a large culvert to meet the creek. The bridge on the Ashokan Reservoir Rail Trail is the last bridge that the Esopus Creek passes underneath before it enters the reservoir. There are now 192 square miles of land feeding the Esopus Creek. The velocity of the water will drop as it enters the reservoir. This will lead to fine sediment falling out of suspension and accumulating at the mouth of the Esopus Creek. Did you know that the Esopus Creek will continue on its journey beyond the reservoir? It will leave here and eventually flow into the Hudson River, meaning that our watershed is also part of the Hudson River watershed. Okay, we've made it to our final stop where the Esopus meets the Ashokan Reservoir. You can see it move nice and slowly as it comes into this large body of water here. I hope you enjoyed our adventure.
confluence of Peck Hollow and Asopus Creek over there. I just wanted to uh, take a quick minute out of our adventure to show you this uh, grumpy cobble for a second. Let me see if I can uh, get him on camera here. There he is. 